to a hot stove with South End Cubs. I'm Executive Chef Josh Farmer. Uh, we're starting a series here to kind of bring some flair and amplify what you do for each month between now and uh, the start of baseball season. So for this month, we're actually going to focus on items that you can take to your Thanksgiving dinner. We're going to introduce a, uh, a hot side item and also a dessert item. Just some things that you can do that you might not normally see uh, there at uh, Thanksgiving meals, but I think they're going to blend in really well and uh, going to impress a lot of people there. First off, what we're going to do, we're going to start off with a fried Brussels sprouts that's tossed in a lemon caper vinaigrette. So all we've done so far is cleaned our Brussels sprouts, cut them in half, and then uh, fried them at 350 degrees for about a minute. So if you do this at home, you don't have a deep fryer that we do here, uh, fill a large stock pot about three quarters of the way full, halfway full with uh, oil, get it up to 350 degrees and uh, just be very, very careful. Try to dry the Brussels sprouts off as much as you possibly can before they go in. They're gonna splatter. There's a good amount of moisture in the leaves as it is, but what the frying actually does is it kind of brings out a little bit of sweetness with the bitterness that comes naturally with the Brussels sprout. So uh, like I said, we've dropped them for a minute at 350 degrees. Very simple process now. So for our lemon caper vinaigrette, uh, we're gonna start off with a little bit of red wine vinegar. Uh, for vinaigrettes, it's a good rule of thumb. You wanna do three parts uh, oil to one part acid. So the acid being your, uh, your vinegar. So we'll do a little bit of red wine vinegar there. Uh, the acid in this is also gonna be some uh, fresh lemon juice. We're just gonna roll that lemon a little bit get it broken up on the inside and before we cut it we're going to get a little bit of zest in there we're going to go about half a lemon's worth of zest uh, if you do not have a micro plant i highly recommend picking one up pretty inexpensive you can get them in any kind of kitchen store or really honestly any major department store will have them as well but uh, the zest in citrus brings a lot of flavor to the table it carries all the natural oils so if you're not really looking at adding the uh, the, the tartness that sometimes citrus can bring to the table and just the flavor of it, zest is a great way to go. So we've got about half a lemon zest in there. We're gonna split our lemon. We'll just give it a quick squeeze. Kind of catch it, make sure we're not getting any seeds in there. Oh, we got one. All right. Okay. So then we're gonna add about a tablespoon worth of parsley. About a half a tablespoon of chopped, fresh chopped garlic. About a half a tablespoon of some chopped up anchovy. I know that anchovies seem kind of, kind of like an odd ingredient. Um, you're not gonna get the fishy flavor that they are on their own when they're in, things like this. Really all that we're adding that for is uh, the, the saltiness, the brininess that those bring to the table. Um, that brine flavor really amplifies with the sweetness of the, uh, the fried Brussels sprouts, which is also why we're going to go ahead and add some capers here as well. So I'm just going to give those a quick rough chop. They don't have to be perfectly chopped. Not all of them have to be chopped up. It just kind of help open up some of the flavors there. Just a little bowl to go. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit it with some oil and just whisk as you go. Now this isn't gonna be a permanent emulsified vinaigrette. It's gonna be temporary, so it will break down, it will separate, but just give it a stir right before you add it onto your Brussels sprouts, and you're gonna be good to go. And then last bit, a little pinch of salt and pepper. This is gonna be one thing you don't wanna to go too heavy on the salt and pepper with. Uh, the salt is gonna be carried through with the anchovies and then the, uh, the capers as well. So finish this up, we're just going to take our, uh, our simple vinaigrette that we made here and just going to pour it right over the Brussels sprouts. I'm going to give that a quick toss here. Definitely check it for seasoning at this point. If it needs some more salt and pepper, go ahead and add it. Uh, it's always good to do when the Brussels sprouts are still warm. It kind of helps to melt that salt onto it and stick a little bit better. Um, and then with this dish, it can actually be something that's done ahead of time. It can be served at room temperature, um, or actually you can fry it ahead of time and uh, just don't dress it until you're ready for service. If you want it warm, you can throw it in the oven for a few minutes, be ready to go. So then all we're gonna do is just get it into our serving bowl. Get 
you want to garnish a little bit more parsley, that's great. You don't have to, but just kind of spice it up a little bit. But there we go. We have our fried Brussels sprouts with a lemon caper vinaigrette. All right, for our next dish that we're going to do for our Thanksgiving meal, uh, it's actually going to be a dessert. So we're going to do a, uh, a blueberry compote filled uh, puff pastry. Very, very simple dish. So all we're going to do is we're going to take some, uh, some blueberries. Now, with blueberries, you can use fresh. For this, I actually prefer using frozen for a couple reasons. One, readily available. You don't have to worry about it. They're ready to go all the time. Two, um, blueberries are one of those things that actually when they freeze, they, they in my opinion, get a little bit better for certain uh, applications. Uh, for this, the sugar kind of tends to um, tighten up and amplify a little bit in flavor, so which is perfect for what we're looking for for this. So really simple. We're going to take some uh, frozen blueberries here. We're going to put them into a pot little bit of water just enough we don't want to quite cover it but just kind of get it so it's sitting in there and then you're going to hit it with a couple healthy spoonfuls this so is just some white sugar here just get them to where they're nice and coated just to help bring that out and tighten this up as they go now um, it'll go on to a medium flame for approximately 8 to 12 minutes just definitely keep an eye on it. it's not something you want to walk away from because when it gets ready it gets ready quick um, the pectins that naturally occur in blueberries are going to start uh, to tighten with that and it'll make it to where it gets down to this consistency where it's almost just like a pie filling. If you really wanted to cut some corners, make it easy on yourself, I'm sure you could buy some pre-made blueberry pie filling, but why not make it? It would be better. So um, by the time the blueberries come off, they'll look like this. You're just going to take some, uh, some puff pastry, which is available any major supermarket, no problem. Just get it in the freezer section. Um, it's the easiest way to work with it and you're good to go. So for this, we're just gonna split it down the middle, stack it on top, split it down the middle again. So you're gonna get four out of each uh, piece, of, uh, piece of dough here. And then we're gonna take uh, an egg wash, which is just egg and a little bit of water mixed together. This is gonna kind of act like our glue for uh, the pastry so that none of the filling uh, blows out and it all stays together and looks nice and neat. Um, that we'll just do a couple here i'll show you a couple different ways to fold it really up to you no right or wrong way uh, so you're good okay biggest thing when you're filling these is don't overfill it so um, you just want about a spoonful and a half there all this information will definitely be available in the recipe so uh definitely refer to that it'll be available on the bottom of the uh the screen here so just gonna fold it over one time and just kind of do like a little a little pop over, if you will. Kind of reminds you of the things you ate as a kid, I'm sure. And we'll just take a fork, crimp that a little bit. Doesn't have to be super pretty, but try and make it look nice and neat if you can. And then for the other way that I like to fold it, kind of fold it up in the middle, crimp it with your fingers, and then bring each corner in, kind of wrap it around that center part. And then crimp that, crimp that edge. Same on this side. And if you need to do add a little bit of egg wash as you go, definitely feel free. All right. And then all you're gonna do is get it onto uh, a parchment lined uh, sheet tray. You're gonna brush it with a little bit more of the egg wash on top into a 350 degree oven, approximately 18 to 20 minutes. You'll be nice golden brown ready to go. They'll end up turning out just like this over here. Great thing about these, again, they can be done ahead of time to where they're sitting out room temperature, good to go. If they're served warm, fantastic. You can even throw them in the oven for a few minutes before it's time for dessert at Thanksgiving meal. Um, if not, they can go out perfectly fine just like this. And then a great way to finish them off is a little bit of a simple glaze here. It's powdered sugar and milk. Kind of give a little bit over each one. Then, you never go wrong finishing it off with a couple scoops of vanilla ice cream. Thank you very much for tuning into this episode of Hot Stove with South Bend Cubs. Look at the bottom of the video for all recipes. Please follow South Bend Cubs on social media for all future updates. We look forward to seeing you here next time on Hot Stove with South Bend Cubs.